Hey, what's up everybody? So this is my June TBR and I don't really have much else to say about it. So let's just jump right into the first book. Meg Primal Waters is book number one for June. It is the third in a series. So if you don't want spoilers on the series, feel free to go ahead and skip this part of the video. 18 years have passed since Jonas Taylor last crossed paths with Carcaridon Megalodon. He is now a middle-aged father of two and feels overwhelmed by mountains of bills and the daily strife of raising a family. But his life changes altogether when he takes a job doing the color commentary for Daredevils, a new television survival series that pits two teams of crazy adventure seekers against one another while sailing in the South Pacific. But somewhere behind the scenes, someone is pulling some dangerous strings. And before this voyage is over, Jonas will again come face to face with the most dangerous creature ever to stalk the Earth. So a little backstory about me in this book. Meg Primal Water is actually the first one I ever picked up. I bought it at some bookstore or uh, book fair in middle school, and I tried to read it, but I think it was a little bit just too long a book for me at the time, so I never finished it, and then later on I found out it was a book series and I started from the very beginning. That was when I was a little bit more of a reader. I've read the first book in the series like three times. The second one I read for the first time last year, and this one is obviously going to be the first one also, first time I finished it. But I'm hoping to actually finish the entire series this summer, maybe in celebration as the second movie of the series comes out called Meg the Trench. It's coming out in August. I can't wait to see that. I saw the first one. The movies are quite a bit different, though, than the books. The books lean more towards technical and scientific, scientific backing as far as the story goes. But the movies lean more into a B-movie territory. It's my personal preference that I like the books more, but you might disagree. The next book I have on my TBR is also a shark book, but this one's going to be nonfiction. We've got Close to Shore by Michael Capuzzo. This is actually, uh, the story behind this book is supposedly that it inspired the movie Jaws, or played some inspiration in the movie Jaws. In 1916, a series of shark attacks happened near uh, the Jersey Shore. I don't know all the details, obviously, because I'm reading the nonfiction book about it. But from what I heard, it did play some inspiration in the movie Jaws or in the book Jaws as well. So I can't wait to read this. Uh, this is going to be my first nonfiction book on the channel. I have decided that I will be reviewing nonfiction books as well as fiction books. As long as the nonfiction books are somewhat interesting and I think people will be interested in hearing my reviews on them. I'm not, I don't have a synopsis for this book because there's not really a synopsis on the back, but that is all you need to know about the book is it is a nonfiction book about the shark attacks that happened in New Jersey in 1916. The third book I have on here is actually a somewhat local book when I picked it up. It is called Aurora, and it actually takes place in Aurora, Illinois. I picked it up in the local section, and I wasn't sure if it was local because it, the story was local or because the author was local. So I did a little research, Looked up the author, David Kep, and I don't think he's from Aurora, Illinois, but the story obviously takes place in Aurora, Illinois. I did find some interesting facts about David, though. He apparently played some role in helping create the Jurassic Park movie and also one of the Indiana Jones movies. So I'm not sure um, how much of his experience with movies will play into writing a novel, but we're, we'll see. I... Partly picked up this book because of the tie to Aurora, Illinois, since I've been there many times, and then also because of the just interesting story. In Aurora, Illinois, Aubrey Wheeler is just trying to get by after her semi-criminal ex-husband splits, leaving behind his unruly teenage son. Then the lights go out, not just in Aurora, but across the globe. A solar storm has knocked out power almost everywhere. Suddenly, all problems are local, very local and Aubrey must assume the mantle of fierce protector of her suburban neighborhood. Across the country lives Aubrey's estranged brother, Thom, a fantastically wealthy, neurotically overprepared Silicon Valley CEO. He plans to ride out the crisis in a gilded desert bunker he built for maximum comfort and security, but the complicated history between the siblings is far from over, and what feels like the end of the world is just the beginning of several long overdue reckonings which not everyone will survive. So I think that story is kind of interesting as far as a solar storm hitting the planet and knocking out all power. I used to, when I was a little bit younger, I used to watch those uh, shows on Discovery Channel and History Channel about like what would happen if this 
disaster scenario occurred, like a solar storm or a mega hurricane or a super tornado, things like that. I've they've, they've always interested me. So once I read that and I saw that it was like in a place that is somewhat local to me, I thought that's pretty interesting. I should probably pick up that book. So it's been sitting on my TBR, though, for like a year or two. Can't wait to read it. But that is the third and final book I plan on reading in June. And reviews will be coming out for all of these, like always. So let me know in the comments what you guys are reading in June or if you've read any of these. And I'll see you in the next video.